The Marshall Islands, with crystal clear seas and balmy temperatures, it's truly an island paradise. For Albon Ishida, it's also his heritage and way of life. But global climate change is now threatening the islands and their ocean ecosystem. The bleaching of the coral is a warning sign. Oh, we want to see the rate of bleaching. We've been monitoring this, uh, this event for the last couple of months since we saw an outbreak. So we want to see how bad it is now. OK, um, ready when you are. OK. Ready, set. The water here in the middle of the Pacific has been getting warmer for years. The rising water temperature disrupts the fragile underwater ecosystem, and now the coral reefs are bleaching and dying. Every time we come here, we expect worse, given the, the situation with climate change increasing worldwide. Uh, bleaching coral will lead to eventually a dead coral, and a dead coral will not bring any fish. So the people won't have anything to live off. The view from the aircraft shows the Majuro Atoll is just a slender strip of land. In most areas, it's only 300 meters wide. Some 35,000 people live here in close proximity. But rising sea levels are now threatening their homes. Just a few weeks ago, floodwaters surged through this house, a shock for the entire family. Jilla and Likun live here with 20 members of their extended family. Moving elsewhere isn't an option. The rising sea levels are threatening the entire island. Johnny Luther is in the living room, repairing damage from the flood. The water came in and around the house. It also brought all the garbage in with it. We had to evacuate the house. The water was everywhere. Albun Ishida and his team are part of the Micronesia Challenge Project, which aims to preserve the Marshall Islands from the consequences of climate change. They've coordinated a regional initiative with other Pacific Island nations to bring their plight to international attention. It's a battle against time. The floodwaters leave behind destroyed coastlines, uprooted trees, and damaged cemeteries. The island residents are losing their land and their way of life. Albon Ishida hopes to slow the pace of the coastal erosion, which also threatens the island's coconut palm trees. The land we remember when we were younger coming to this island was on that part of the water. But now it's been eroded away. And we see this continuing to take place. And this is within our lifetime, say 30 years uh, within our lifetime, that this, the process has taken place from there all the way to here. And then who knows, 30 years from now, it's going to go further inland. The team is planting shrubs and trees to help preserve the soil that remains. Hundreds of pandanus trees are part of the plan to conserve 20% of Micronesia's territorial resources by 2020. The Micronesia Challenge Project is funded by donors. The German government has also contributed 2 million euros to the initiative, which will benefit many local conservation activities. We're doing this as a, as a way of you know, telling ourselves that we have to do something. So even with the simple action, you know, at least we know that we're doing our part to keep our island safe. But, you know, again, global warming and sea level rise is a global phenomenon. We don't have the power to stop it, but we can do what we can locally to try to reduce its impact into our islands and into our own society. Scarcity of drinking water on the island is another result of climate change. The Micronesia Challenge team is encouraging residents to collect rainwater in tanks. Johnny Luther's family also has to conserve water. The rising ocean level is salinizing their groundwater reserves. Our mission statement is to basically raise the level of awareness 
so that people can understand about their surroundings, uh, their uh, <clears throat> their day-to-day -day livelihood towards climate change, and basically to um, have them sustainably use their resources and protect biodiversity. That's our aim. After three months without rain, Johnny Luther has to go and collect water from a public desalination plant. Majuro has two desalination plants, but that's not nearly enough. Government support is crucial to help address the water issue. That's why Albon Ishida is meeting with Jurelang Zedkaya. He's well aware of the gloomy forecast. In only 50 years, his nation may be uninhabitable. Other imperiled islands are making plans for evacuation. But the president of the Marshall Islands does not believe purchasing land abroad is an option. The Marshallese nation will not surrender its sovereignty to other nations. We refuse to be refugees in a strange land. Albo Nishida is worried about his family's future. His wife is expecting their fifth child on an island that is slowly being consumed by the sea. He knows his work is crucial for his family's future. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be the kids who will have no identity, who will have no place to go back to, who will have no privilege of enjoying the same lifestyles have we, as we have enjoyed living in harmony with the ocean, living in harmony with our environment. So we worry about this every day. And this is why we have to tell our story all the time, over and over again.